Hey guys, what's up? It's Eli Knight with Knight Jiu Jitsu. I'm here with uh, Jared Jessup with IQ Jiu Jitsu, and we're talking about options from the gift wrap position. Uh, gift wrap position, or twisting arm control, or whatever you want to call it, um, is a position that has a lot of control. It's a really stable position. It's, a, it's an enhanced mounted position, and it has a lot of good options from it. But sometimes uh, people can be kind of the dog chasing the car there. So we're going to kind of tighten that up a little bit, then go over some basics and some tips and tricks on how to really solidify. And I've gotten from mounted position, I've gotten control here somehow, um, and I've gotten this wrist control here, and I've gotten this wrapped around Jared. So this is what we call the gift wrap position here. Now I want to slide my knee up behind his back here. I want to keep this foot here for now, about mid thigh, so he can't bring this foot forward, this leg forward like a kickstand. I also don't want to pull this too tight because I'm going to try to roll him first this way, and I don't want that to turn into a kickstand. So instead, I'm going to keep a strong grip, but I'm going to take his elbow and push it to his diaphragm. I want to back my chest up deep behind him and then use that to kind of steamroll him onto both of his arms here, pinning him like that. And then I'm going to scoop underneath. I want my pinky and my blade of my hand to go across his eyebrows, put my elbow on the floor, pick his head up, and turn it toward my choking arm here like this. And then if I can finish the rear naked choke here like this, or short choke, then that's a really good attack option from there. So how we do with a kickstand, right, it, it with the leg. So sometimes if he throws the leg out, it can be difficult uh, to get that roll. It's almost like the log's got a branch right now. So we want to make it back into a log again. So I've got the grip. And uh, for this uh, version, I'm going to come through and, and grab his forearm, okay? So uh, once I've got the, the forearm here, I'm going to put my elbow on the ground, and then I'm going to open my knee up back here. Just so my elbow goes to the ground, I open the knee up back here. Now I'm going to take my weight off, I'm going to pull his shoulders back. Now put my knuckles on the ground, open the knee, and I can do that again if I need to. And it pulls his body into a straight line again, then allowing me to roll him over. Now, so both my knuckles go on the ground, I straighten the, uh, the arms, and I take his shoulder over this form. Of course, you got a triangle here, one, two, three. I'm taking the shoulder directly over this line. So it goes boom, now I can pry and come down on top, right? So I'm using this top arm like a crowbar. Uh, and you've got your, you've got your choke setups, uh, setups from there. Pry over, boom. Now, a couple of other ways you can get the, the neck up, or you can smash his head, of course. Then I can walk the hand, and then I can walk the other hand, and then walk the other hand back and forth. And that will pry the chin up, allowing me to get deeper with each pry. So, Whenever our A side attacks and that A side energy is kind of failing us or it's running into too strong of a defense, then that's the time to switch to the B side. And you have to kind of like know when is the appropriate time to go from there. So if we wind up in this position here, and you know, like we've gotten here before, and I'm just running into too many obstacles. He's too bunched up. I'm, I can't seem to straighten him out. I'm, re I'm receiving too much energy in response to this. So I'm going to take the energy that he's giving me in response, which are kickstands this way and pressure back this way, and I'm going to use that as an opportunity to take his back the other direction. So whenever we get there, like Jared was saying before, this is a better, op a better choice here to go inside the arm if I know I'm going to make this transition. I'm going to open the knee up. I'm going to drive one more good time to make sure he's committed to that. And then this foot in the back here is going to windshield wiper in toward his lower back. And as I do that, I'm going to sit down over it, but I'm not going to pull him directly across me. I'm going to sit him up instead here this way. I pick up like that so it makes room for my leg to come out from underneath. And whenever I go to fall, I want to try to keep my head underneath his head over here so that instead of him falling directly like this and starting to escape, I go here and it blocks his route. I don't have to put the feet directly in front. I definitely don't have to cross them. I'm going to instead step here on the, the hip and I'm going to cover it with this one here. And so now I'm on the underhook side, which offers me a lot of control. And from here, I can let go of the wrist and then I can push the wrist down with the other hand. And so I can go straight into an attack, cutting away at least 50% of his defense right away here. And then walk this up here like this, maybe finish with one hand on the choke here. Or like Jared was saying, once I get this open wide enough, I can pull this one free and then shoot back in and then go back into my choking sequence from there. This foot right here, if you can't make it all the way across to right here, you can just keep the foot flexed open. So if I go to step over, I hit a wall right here. Mm -hmm. You see, that, uh, that's, that's helpful. And also, since I'm laying on the arm right here, you can also just bring this arm back. He's got the arm bar right there as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So. so it could be that we've, we've laid here and uh, I get my hand through, it's all good. I'm going to, to, to pry, but he's, he's actively bringing this arm out, making it difficult for me to uh, to roll him, right, by making a, a branch out or whatnot. I'm going to take advantage of that. So from here, my hands are going to go flat to the ground. I'll put this hand that was on the floor on my own wrist. I'll loop my elbow in front of the face. I like it all the way underneath the chin. 
Now I walk heel toe, heel toe. Now I put the weight on the hand and the foot so that my rear leg is free to swing around. Boom, into the arm lock. Now, you notice, as I'm here, what a lot of people run into is they have a difficulty moving this leg, right? Because it starts feeling tight. So I've got to free the weight from that leg. If there's any weight on that leg, it won't be able to move. So I pin the, the arm. I want to loop this round, because if it stays here, I'm going to keep my own arm. So I loop the elbow in front of the face, forearm goes under the chin, holding his head in, in place. I put the weight on the hand and the weight on the foot. Now that frees this leg from weight, so it's, uh, so it's able to swing all the way around. And I have a seat right next to the shoulder, all back in the arm. Because of the angle you have to create with your hip getting that leg around sometimes too, you notice like Jared didn't have his foot way down here. If you're very flexible, you can get away with that because you can like uh, keep your hips here centered, your knees in close, and your ankles out. But if uh, you're normal human flexibility, then like you might want to walk this foot up just a little bit uh, closer here like that. So whenever we get to this position here, whenever I circle that around, I can also kind of lean that direction here too, and that's going to kind of keep them framed away here. Um, as an alternative from here, you can switch the hands inside and you can push here or even come up like this and keep his head pressed down so that he can't sit up uh, directly into me. And then from there, I can slide this leg over here this way. Another helpful tip here is if on the way through, if I can pull this elbow up so that he can't have this one free to start scooping my leg or anything like that and pull both arms inside and then I can cross the ankles and then start fighting to get this one free like this. And if you need some extra tips on how to finish the arm lock once you get into position, I have a whole video on that with like 10 of them or something. Notice how as he's got the leg cross right here, it's the head side that's on bottom, right? It's important. Yeah, if it's the other way, it's easier for him to disconnect the feet, mm -hmm. right? But this locks him in place and this puts more pressure onto his head here, keeping him trapped. Controls it, binds my shoulders and controls him more as well. So. Another opportunity that you notice here is like whenever we get to this position, because I have this wrapped in so uh, nice and tight like this, and this arm has come up, something that I may like to do, and this is before I've brought this arm underneath, is that if this arm is just kind of hanging out and he's maybe looking to kickstand out with this one, then I can trap this arm down here like this, and then once I have this stretched out, if um, I have the flexibility in the space, I can shoot this directly through, or I can step here on the bicep and then use this to help make the space here by picking up. And then once I have this picked up here like this, I'm gonna clear and I'm gonna shoot this leg through, and I'm gonna try to grab my shin in the back here like this, keeping everything trapped in nice and tight. I'm gonna bring here, um, Jared will talk more about the hips being over the knee in just a moment, but I wanna stretch this out here like this, and I'm gonna pick this ankle up lock it in place like this here. I don't want my knees facing opposite directions. I want them both facing the same direction. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wing this uh, bottom ankle out like that and then finish the triangle from there. So, yeah, another detail about yeah, that. Yeah, you can see us, you know, he's talking about winging the, winging the legs out. You know, it's, if you look at the, the triangle space right here, as I turn the heels out, you see that closes. Mm -hmm. Also, as I flex the feet, it closes it more as well. So uh, that's something to be aware of. Um, <laughs> So it might be that as I go to, uh, to shoot through, um, right here, he goes to turn back and towards me or not. And so I still want to be able to make the choke happen. This can also come up if we were, if we were here and I just slapped the hand down and step over, right, from the amount of triangle. Help the hand. Now, I'm going to move my hips back over, just this way, please. Back over this wall right here. Boom. And then I swing my leg around so I get a nice deep grip, a uh, nice deep bite on his neck. I switch back and my hands switch. If his arms do not across, here'd be a good opportunity to get the hand back in front, right, and across. I cut the head, my hand goes out. Now I'm gonna bring my hips directly over the knee as if it were like a, a stop sign, a post that goes uh, directly into the ground. So I come, I come up and over, and that, that bring my hip over the knee puts his body in position, allowing you to get a, a nice deep breath. My hip comes up in triangles, and then again, turning out like you guys were talking about. Jared kind of glossed over the point a little bit. We mentioned it just briefly in passing in a couple of these positions, but this gift wrap position here like this, whenever we, we wind up here, this is, if, depending on what the rule set is, this is a great opportunity to just sit and land some strikes. This is gonna definitely get elicit a response. The guy's gonna bring this hand up to the fin possibly. He's gonna maybe roll this way because he can't roll back the other way. And this is what happens a lot of times when you get in this position, is the guy will actually roll and expose his back, making the back kick even easier. And it's a very common, very instinctive, very intuitive thing for you to like roll away from the danger. And even people who are, who are trained and know better than that and know they're exposing their back a lot of the time, you still do that just to get up away from the punch so anyway guys um, I hope you enjoyed some of these I hope that you got some uh, helpful tips out of these even if you've seen these before hopefully there's some little uh, nuggets in there that you haven't been doing that will help out and if you haven't seen any of these before then uh, great hopefully these help a lot 
Let me know if these help you out and uh, keep watching that jujitsu channel and check out IQJujitsu.com. Or also right. Facebook. <laughs> Thanks, guys.